For some reason, a lot of people are under the impression that tides make sense on the heliocentric model. They think that tides are perfectly explained. Foolproof, buddy. Why are you questioning it? Today, by the end of this three minute video, I'm hoping that you can question tides publicly or privately to anyone. When you go looking for the answers on Google, hopefully not, use something like Brave, DuckDuckGo, I don't know, they're probably controlled too. You'll get these answers right here. If you were to YouTube, Neil deGrasse Tyson explaining tides, the priest of scientism himself, explaining how tides work, you'd get this. Next thing I say may be mind-blowing to you. Okay. Okay. The tide doesn't actually come in and out. What? <laughs> what happens is there is a bulge of water, two of them, on opposite sides of the Earth, caused by the sun and the moon. And Earth turns inside that bulge. Mm -hmm. So when, this, when we say the water rises and falls tidally, what's happening is we are rotating into the bulge and then out of the bulge. So the bulge is already it's there. It's already there. And all we kind of do is pass through the pass bulge. Pass through. And, and if you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're, you've got to be thinking. What? No way. Please don't tell me this is the explanation. Yeah, you've got to believe in something similar to this little graphic behind me. Just so you fully understand, we're going to jump into fairy tale land where gravity's real. So this ball is a sixth of the mass of this ball. So it's a sixth of the gravitational pull. How, if it's a sixth of the gravitational pull, is it superseding the gravitational pull of the Earth at its surface, where it's supposed to be strongest and pulling these oceans out away from it? It's honestly that simple. And while we're talking about water, if NASA was training here on Earth for space, don't you think they should train in vacuum chambers rather than in swimming pools? I don't know. The graphic I have behind me is tidal nodes. These are places on the Earth where there is zero tides. Zero. With all of the things I just showed you, do you actually think that makes any sense? Like, no, 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 stop. Think about it. <laughs> go and watch Neil deGrasse Tyson say it again for me. One last thing before you go, and you should definitely check my link tree in my bio for my podcast where I expose a lot more that I can't talk about on here, but tsunamis should actually prove that the Earth is a ball, easily. The tsunami should wrap around continents like they do other continents. This is a map of a tsunami that went towards Antarctica. <laughs> it was contained by the ice wall. I get a lot of people pretty angry when I say that I don't believe in the current cosmology that is being projected by mainstream science. And by cosmology, I mean the field of study that brings together the natural sciences, particularly astronomy and physics, in a joint effort to understand the physical universe as a unified whole. This is exactly what I do not believe in. I don't believe that we're chasing the sun 500,000 miles an hour, 4.5 billion miles a year. I don't think that we're orbiting at 66,616 miles an hour on average. And I don't think we're spinning 1,000 miles per hour at all. For those people that can't wrap their head around why I can't believe in this nonsense, <laughs> here's a video of a theoretical physicist explaining exactly why I cannot believe in this cosmology. Is a crisis in cosmology. Usually in science, if we're off by a factor of two or a factor of ten, we call that horrible. We say something's wrong with the theory. We're off by a factor of ten. However, in cosmology, we're off by a factor of ten to the one hundred and twenty. That is one with a hundred and twenty zeros after it. This is the largest mismatch between theory and experiment in the history of science. I think Nikola Tesla put this best, to be honest. The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. <laughs> Me personally, I think that all of the people believing in this cosmology with absolutely no evidence of curvature and no evidence that we're spinning. <laughs> Check out the Michelson-Morley experiment, they proved that. And then we have experiments today that were a hundred times more sensitive that cannot detect the orbit around the sun that's supposed to be 66,616 miles an hour. But no one has a problem with this. <laughs>
These were all quotes that came about after the Mickelson Morley experiment. I know you guys can't see the very top one, but I, I can read it. We do not have and cannot have any means of discovering whether or not we are carried along in a uniform motion of translation. The failure of the many attempts to measure terrestrially any effects of the Earth's motion. There was just one alternative. The Earth's true velocity through space might have been nil. Briefly, everything occurs as if the Earth were at rest. It's like the Earth is at rest, and we don't have to assume the opposite, that the Earth is just orbiting around the sun, but we can't detect it. That doesn't sound like science at all. Shout out Wits It Gets It on YouTube for all these quotes. Legendary guy. Since then, I have come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment. And then he goes on to say, though the Earth is spinning around the sun. He's basically saying, I believe the Earth is spinning around the sun, but nobody can prove it. And that, my friends, is why I don't believe in current cosmology, and I actually think that the Earth is flat, stationary, and all the luminaries rotate above us. <laughs> if you didn't know already, the U.S. government is releasing the truth in a lot of their patents and documents that they have on their website. CIA, NASA, doesn't really matter. They're kind of admitting the truth. Here's a list here of every year that a U.S. patent was released on how to control the weather. Feel free to search any of these patents up. And here's three documents from NASA admitting the Earth is flat and non-rotating. The DPS equations of motion use four assumptions that simplify the program while maintaining its fidelity for most maneuvers and applications, point mass modeling, non-turbulent atmosphere, zero side forces, and a non-rotating Earth. This report documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Last one. The model frequently used is that of a flat, non-rotating Earth. <laughs> but these new documents that I found last night on the CIA's website is gonna surprise you probably. Photographic observations of the spectral intensity of the firmament? The spectral brightness of the firmament along the alsocanter of the sun was observed. Here's a document the color temperature of the firmament. Investigation on the zodiacal light, provisional results obtained by the observation of the Soviet expedition in Egypt, of the diurnal firmament can contain can attain up to 70%. What are you guys are you're admitting it? There is a hard fast barrier above us, and it's not called the Van Allen belts, just like the science community is trying to perpetuate now. They're trying to say that there is an impenetrable barrier in the sky, but it's not the firmament. It's the Van Allen belt. No, it's the firmament. They tell you the truth in the patents, in the papers, in the documents. They just hope that you won't go reading them. Me? I'm gonna continue reading these patents and I'm gonna find the truth. And I'm gonna keep exposing it, just like I'm doing on my podcast. If you wanna check it out, link tree in my bio. We talk a lot about a lot of things that I could never talk about on here. You are definitely gonna find this a little bit odd if you critically think enough. So we all know the brightest object in the sky is the sun. Second would be the moon. And... I don't know what you're thinking, but the third, I would think, should be a star, right? Like Sirius, really bright star in the sky, one of those. Definitely not a planet, because a planet is supposed to be a rock, and how could that be brighter than a sun that is emitting light, right? Venus. This is what they're trying to tell everybody, what Venus looks like, and you have to believe that this... The light is hitting this surface and reflecting back brighter than every other thing in the sky. I I just don't get it. And let's let's talk. What is this? These are supposed to be the two of the same planets. Like well, we're gonna keep going, but let me just show you a video of what Venus actually looks like through a telescope. Does that look like it's reflecting light? Third, Jupiter. Let's keep going. Mars, Mercury, and then Sirius. You have to believe that these rocks that are supposed to be orbiting us are all reflecting light back to us, which just doesn't even account for the inverse square law of light. If you look into that, every time you double the distance of a luminary becomes a fourth of the brightness, but 
Don't mind that when we're talking about then that's that's when emitting light. That's not reflecting light. Anyway, the same people that told you this makes sense produced this image for you. Yes, this is an actual image from NASA that they expected everybody to think was real. And unless you're new here, you should know. I don't believe in planets. Minus the T. That's why NASA says T minus. Take the T out of Satan. <laughs> Spell NASA. But no, no, no. I, d I don't believe in any planets at all. There's no planets in the sky. We are not on a planet. I think that every single person on this earth should remove that word from their vocabulary, honestly. We're on a plane, dude. <laughs> a plane. An infinite plane that could go on forever for all we know if we were allowed to go past the Antarctic wall. But... Water suggests this. This is a really easy way to deduce in your head that the Earth's flat. The surface is 70% water. And you think water can do this. When we have laser experiments proving over hundreds of miles that water does not do this. I want to preface the next words that are going to come out of my mouth with this. This is going to sound crazy. But what if I told you the World Cup had attributes to it that... <laughs> It actually suggested that the Earth is flat. I know what you're thinking. That is the most illogical bullshiz I've ever heard in my entire life. But allow me to explain. It wasn't that they were kicking around a ball that suggested that the Earth was flat. It was the flight home. And for all the people that are seeing this that aren't familiar, let me give a little bit of context. There's a lot of emergency flight path landings that don't make sense if the Earth is a ball spinning around the sun or spinning at all take this flight for example from argentina to india and they emergency landed in amsterdam <laughs> right on the line for some reason lights just make more sense on flat earth it's like the earth's flat but again yeah this one's this one's pretty bad this one's pretty bad for the heliosexuals from Auckland to Los Angeles is where the emergency landed. This is what it looks like on the globe. They were trying to go to Lima, Peru. Instead of flying on the bottom side of the ball, they went thousands of miles above the equator. And you look at it on the flat earth model. Now let's relate this logic back to the World Cup flight home. Argentina landed in Rome with World Cup trophy. Argentina had a short layover at Rome's airport before continuing their flight to Buenos Aires. Here's a little bit more information on the flight. And you'd think if these guys were flying from Doha to Buenos Aires, there's no way that they would go the opposite direction of where they were going, right? You're telling me these guys went the opposite direction. That's exactly what they're trying to say. They're literally... every flight light paths planes it doesn't really matter once you get into the sky it's a great proof that the, the ground below you isn't spinning take this plane right here the sr-71 this thing's top speed is 2200 miles an hour meaning it goes 2200 miles in one hour how much curvature do you think is over 2200 miles on a ball that has a circumference of 24,000? a pretty good amount of mileage probably here let me tell you exactly this plane would have to drop 9.5 miles every 60 seconds. Meaning it would also have to drop 836 feet per second to stay at the same altitude if the Earth's surface were curved. Because think about it, it would fly off into space if this wasn't the case. Maybe the Earth is a level plane. Think about it. And if you want to think about more subjects other than this, check out my podcast. I've been getting a lot of messages from people saying, Okay, Caleb, I get it. I've seen your videos. I've seen the evidence. The Earth is flat, and I understand that. But now they don't know how they're going to coexist with all the heliosexuals that surround them and their family and friends. And today, I've got an answer for those people that can't coexist with the heliosexuals and you feel the need to wake these people up or end up in an argument that gets so heated that they will not be willing to talk to you anymore have the answers and a lot of people ask me caleb is your family awake to flat earth most of them and the ones that aren't again are not willing to talk to me about the subject because i have so much knowledge around it and they can't disprove me so it makes them mad but if you're serious about waking up your friends and family to the truth <laughs> All you're gonna need is $3. This is the app you're gonna need. Search these letters in this sequence. 
in your app store or play store and buy it. Let's go over why you need it. So under the images section, you'll find all of these where you can teach people exactly what they believe with their solar system. You can show people all of these images to wake them up. I get a lot of the images that I use from here. There's a question mark button within the app that literally leads you to all of the shadow band videos on YouTube that you'll never find if you even go searching for them. They're all linked right here. All the questions that you have about Flat Earth, all the answers are right here. Other reason to get the app is Dave links me right here. So if I were to ever get banned or anything, you'd know where to find me. Also on the app, it gives you great resources for books and other things that you can buy to educate yourself and your children. There's also an entire section on the app that links you to other flat earthers where you can message them and create group meetups and stuff like that. It's pretty awesome. Before you go downloading the app and then confidently telling all your friends and family the earth is flat, <laughs> Make sure to use my referral code, seriously, 64178. I'm trying to stay at the top of the leaderboard, guys. And always remember, <laughs> there's no proof that we're on a spinning ellipsoid, oblate spheroid, pear, or whatever they want to believe. The Earth is not flat! The Earth is not a ball! Okay, I promise I'm not going to yell for the entire video like Joe does to make his points. I'm going to calmly talk over the points that Joe made and point out the fallacies. Selenillion eclipses are a phenomenon that happens during a lunar eclipse where you can see both the sun and the moon above the horizon. This is obviously a proof that the Earth is not a ball because we're supposed to be in between the sun and the moon during a lunar eclipse. If you don't know how that works we shouldn't be able to see them both. Similar to how we're seeing the sun and the moon during the same time during the day a lot of the times. <laughs> like, isn't it supposed to be on the other side of the ball, given moonlight to... I don't know. Anyway, Joe's second proof that we are on a ball spinning around the sun going 4.5 billion miles a year, but none of the constellations are changing and Polaris is staying in the exact same spot is supposed to be seasons. Seasons is one of the worst arguments that the earth is a ball. This is what you have to believe. The sun is 93 million miles away and this is how the temperature of the earth works when it's tilted. When on the flat earth model, the sun just gets closer and farther away from the North Pole. So when the sun is over you, it's going to be summer. And when the sun is farther away on its most southern declination, it'll be winter in America. And it will be summer in Australia and the continent south of the equator. Here's another photo just for reference. Joe then goes on to say that you can see the curvature of the earth from planes, guys. Why would you think that the earth is flat? Obviously, Joe's very new to the argument here. Okay, guys, Neil deGrasse Tyson has went into multiple interviews claiming that nobody can see the curvature of the Earth from upwards of 120,000 feet because flat earthers started setting up cameras that weren't fisheye lenses upwards of 130,000, 120,000 feet, and the horizon stayed completely horizontal the entire way up. Look at NASA's images of the Earth. To which I would reply... Here's a statement from Robert Simmons, a NASA data visual analyzer. It's photoshopped because it has to be. Sure you want to talk about NASA's images? Is it setting in yet? Joe even messes up enough to say that the images that NASA is producing are coming from the International Space Station. I, I'm not even going to reply to this. Here's a couple pictures of how horizontal our horizon is. And stop showing this picture to people. We don't believe the Earth is a disk out in space. We don't believe in space. Fact that eclipses are on a sorrow cycle, which is approximately like every 18 years, 10, 11, or 12 days, suggests maybe the sky above us is like a clock. The sun creates a 24-hour day cycle. The moon creates a month. Moonth. Oh, and all of our ancestors were flat earthers. They depicted it to be flat. Joe saw my video. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Joe here is a huge TikTok creator, 21 million followers. You've probably seen his videos before on the For You page. He made a video calling out Flat Earther, saying, no, 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 lunar eclipses prove the Earth has curvature. Seasons suggest that the Earth is a ball. And I made my three minute response video replying. And somehow through all the notifications that he gets, it actually got to him and he watched the video. You also say all of our ancestors were flat earthers. Yeah, you're figuring it out. You're getting it. All of our ancestors were flat earthers. None of them had cell phones, but they drew pretty much the exact same picture with a flat earth with a firmament over our heads. 
And then his next question, the dying question to prove the Earth is a ball, Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes is thought to have found the circumference of the Earth through sticks and shadows. But what a lot of people overlook is that the fact that the shadows were created could have also been because the sun is local and small. Did Eratosthenes never see that we have crepuscular rays? <laughs> like, this doesn't make sense if the sun is 93 million miles away, should it? All these light rays be coming straight? It's really this simple. And for the last three minutes of this video, I'm just gonna provide a bunch of more proofs for Joe, hoping that he sees this reply. So do you know that they're telling everybody that gravity holds all of our atmosphere? So gravity now can hold on to nitrogen and oxygen, and supposedly our atmosphere is being held with the spin of the Earth. <laughs> That's why we don't spin under clouds, because if the Earth were spinning a thousand plus miles per hour, don't you think we should spin under the clouds because they're not connected to the Earth? No, they say that gravity is doing this. You can believe that, but I can't. The Globers are like, dude, tides. <laughs> tides prove the Earth's a ball, dude. Did you know the Earth has tidal nodes? These areas right here are where we have absolutely zero tides. I don't think that that is possible on this. And if you could just go, Joe, please, go look up Neil deGrasse Tyson explaining tides and then think about tidal nodes, you'll get there. Yo, think about this, dude. The ISS is supposedly within low Earth orbit, not connected to the Earth again. We're doing this. And this, we're supposed to believe is just tagging along. Yes, you want to know about satellites, huh? You want to know about satellites next? Satelloons, more like. NASA admits to sending satellites into the air with helium balloons. You think that they could just float up to the point where they don't fall back down? <laughs> I don't know have thousands of satellites orbiting the Earth, don't you think the whole Earth should be covered in satellite coverage? For a lot of people, the fact that I say that the Earth is flat, it drives them up the firmament itself. It drives them crazy. But they don't realize. We say it for a reason. We've seen videos, we have pictures to back it, and more. This is from the Artemis Return Mission. Live streamed by NASA 10 days ago. Watch for yourself. If you think this is real, I, don't, I just don't know. <laughs> Orion in a trajectory to exit distant retrograde orbit and head back toward the moon ahead of RPF today. Oh, that was not good. Oh, you guys left Here's it up too. Just prior to that burn. But he's always like, oh, the Earth's flat, Einstein, seriously? Here's a quote from Einstein saying that nobody can prove that the Earth is orbiting, spinning, or chasing the sun through terrestrial experiments. If the Earth is orbiting the sun at 66,616 miles an hour and going 4.5 million miles a year, 500,000 miles an hour through space, I think it would be easy to prove. NASA? <laughs> they lie. Just think about it. Planes. Planes fly like they're flying over a flat stationary plane. Just think about it. If the Earth were spinning a thousand miles per hour eastward, if a plane were flying south to north, wouldn't they have to account for that to get to their destination? Like, think about it. Every single flight path from the southern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere crosses the equator into the northern hemisphere thousands of miles. <laughs> Obviously, from the first clip I showed, there is something going on with NASA. Not a space agency. <laughs> Just so you know, there is a plane that NASA owns that has the exact same dimension telescope as the Hubble telescope, supposedly. Maybe the Hubble telescope isn't orbiting the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour taking pictures. Maybe it's just on a plane that they take into high altitudes. Obviously a classic. Gotta show this one when we're talking NASA. Allow me to introduce you to Miroslaw whatever. A Polish pilot who was the first pole in space. A lot of people probably know where I'm going just based off of that sentence in and of itself, but <laughs> let's continue. This guy was a graduate of military pilot school in Dublin. Hermance Whatever was the second intercosmos mission launched on June 27th, 1978. Again, 
He spent nearly eight days in space carrying out scientific experiments and photographing Earth's surface. So the claim is that our buddy Miro Schlaw, whatever, went to space for eight days. <laughs> so there is no way that this guy would come out and say that the Earth is flat, right? Tam był. Czy ziemia rzeczywiście jest kulą zawieszoną w kosmosie? Jest płaska. Tak jak oczekują oni. Nie spodziewałem się co prawda tego pytania, ale zapewniam pana, że jest płaska. Generał Mirosław Hermoszewski. I assure you, it's flat. I can also assure you, the earth is flat and stationary. Look at this. Look at this balloon. 120,000 feet. The horizon looking horizontal. Everybody's probably seen the interview of Buzz Aldrin with the little girl interviewing him, asking him about the moon landing and him admitting that it didn't happen. <laughs> well, um, his MK Ultra programming turned off again during another interview. Uh, what was the scariest moment of the journey? Scariest? It didn't happen. It could have been scary. What is going on with all the people that they're claiming went to space like years later saying that they didn't? What, what's going on with all that? You know, it's photos like this that really freak me out. Makes you wonder. There are adults walking around right now paying mortgages and things, car payments, everything, like living life that actually believe that this is floating around a million miles away from Earth in orbit Taking pictures. <laughs> I can't, I just can't, I just can't. For some reason, the last time I showed this picture, the video got taken down. <laughs> uh, weird how, like, if the sun is 93 million miles away and it's the only light source casting shadows, why are the shadows all having different angles? <laughs> it's like they're lights that are close and local and not the sun. Yeah, look right here. Yeah, look at that. Did you think that the center of the Earth was proven or something? Like, did you think that this? Do you think that that was 100% a fact? Huh. Interesting. I'm going to present to you today that this <laughs> and this and this are all just guesses. Or more formally known as pseudoscience. I started researching. How do we know the center of the Earth? How do we know that it's made of iron and other contents that cause magnetism at the North and South Pole? The deepest hole within the U.S. is the Bertha Rogers Gas Well in Oklahoma at 32,000 feet, six miles deep. But the deepest hole known on the Earth is on the Kola Peninsula in Russia near Murmansk. Talking eight miles deep, <laughs> pretty far. Remember, the farthest that we've physically seen with our eyes is eight miles. <laughs> How deep's the crust? The crust is six to 40 miles. And they're claiming the core is 1,850. <laughs> so immediately what you should be asking is, how do we know the rest? How do we know what the inside of the earth looks like? Scientists rely on seismic waves, shock waves, generated by earthquakes and explosions. What they're telling you is they're looking at a graph going up and down on a seismometer, depending on the layer that it's going through as far as a medium, and that figured out the rest. Wow. Your thing, though, keeps popping up every time you look at this. For some reason, they feel the need to defend the shape of the Earth constantly, but don't provide any proof. And by the way, whoever wrote this article, you need, this is an error right here. That needs to be image. I don't know why you're saying photograph. It's admitted there's no photographs of the Earth as a whole. <laughs> you may ask me, okay, smart guy, well then what's at the center of the Earth? I don't participate in pseudoscience, are you kidding me? I don't know what's at the center of the Earth. We could be on a topographical plane that goes on forever. Who knows if there's a core? Who's to say there is one? I don't know. By the way, as those guys were digging the eight miles down, they were trying to guess what each layer was, and they were wrong every single time.
Now, I don't know about you, but I don't remember learning about Auguste Pigard in history class. This guy was attaching metal steel balls to hydrogen balloons and seeing how high he could go in the sky. Literally. Super odd, he seemed to be a big influence on science and our history, but again, we don't really hear about him much. Maybe it's because he's a flat earther. As the first man to reach the stratosphere, he said, it seemed a flat disc with an upturned edge. Obviously, that quote right there should tell you that's why you're not hearing about him anymore. This guy is a flat earther. Anybody that's a flat earther is not allowed to be in the public eye. But you know what they do do in the public eye? Tell us the truth. This is an artist rendition of what August Picard was doing when he went into the stratosphere towards the firmament. And what I'm about to show you is a Hennessy commercial that was produced and posted for all of the public to see. This is called Revelation of Method. This is them showing you the truth to your face and then nobody saying anything to NASA and having any problem with it. And just to get your mind in the right frame of reference here, before I play this clip of this commercial showing everybody the truth, this is what biblical cosmology looks like. There's a firmament here holding waters above. Hence why the sky might be blue. And here's a bunch of our other ancestors' drawings of what they thought the shape of the earth was. You'll see it happens over and over the shape of the dome. But after you see this clip, let me know in the comments if you think that they're showing us the truth and everybody's just not realizing it. In 1931, August Picard took his balloon to an altitude of nearly 52,000 feet. He reported that the Earth looked flat. If you've been following my work, you know, I don't believe in this. I don't think that we're on an oblate spheroid. For all we know, the Earth could be flat. And unless you're gonna start asking logical questions to deduce whether there's curvature or we're spinning, <laughs> you're immediately gonna ask me, why in the hell would they lie to us? Why would they lie and say that the Earth is a ball? <laughs> you mean these guys? Why would all the governments of all of the world agree to lie to the human population that the Earth is a ball? In my opinion, to hide God. If we're on a ball, we came from a Big Bang. Just so everybody is aware that does believe in God, the Big Bang doesn't include God. There's no God to the Big Bang. There's supposedly just an explosion and poof, we're all here of all for monkeys. That's the difference here. I used to be an atheist. I used to be a hardcore atheist, like, yeah, we have spawned from amoebas, totally, yeah, viruses are real, totally. And then I figured out that the Earth was flat, and I figured out that there's a firmament above us. And the first thing that I asked was, if there's a firmament above my head, who put it there? Yes, people, we're talking about the firmament here, yeah, obvious. Polaris sits at the top, hasn't moved for centuries, <laughs> yeah, sitting right there. There's obviously a lot more motivation, though, for telling everybody that we're on a ball. Do you remember the Truman Show when he's in school and he tells his teacher that he wants to be an explorer and the teacher tells him there's nowhere else to explore? We figured out the whole globe. We've been everywhere. That's the thing. <laughs> They're lying. They're lying about that, too. There's more land. Yeah, more resources. Past the Antarctic Wall. If you're not up to date, there's this thing called the Antarctic Treaty, like stopping everybody from leaving the Arctic Circle. <laughs> the 60th South Latitude, third page, check the Antarctic Treaty on the third page, it'll say you can't go past the 60th South Latitude without special permission from the governments. <laughs> so if they keep us within this circle and tell us there's nothing more, 
they can inflate the prices on all of the food, all of the oil, and all of the water, and the rest, and just basically make us slaves. This is how the sun works. <laughs> it's called the inverse square law of light. If you didn't know, light doesn't travel forever. The sun's not 93 million miles away. It's local. Here's like a bunch of experiments that we did in the past proving that the earth is stationary and that the sky moves, guys. <laughs> Nobody seeing these? Guys, this is really simple. They convinced everybody that the Bermuda Triangle is dangerous and scary so that nobody would go sit out there during their launches. It's it's really simple. Once you realize the Earth is flat, you're going to realize that there's intelligent design to this place. We have a god. Just so everybody is on the same page, modern day evolutionists are purporting to the entire populace that we spawned from amoebas. <laughs> Yeah, we spawned from amoebas that turned into fish, <laughs> turned into monkeys. My problem, as well as a lot of others, is simply this. If we spawned in, from amoebas <laughs> and then came from fish that turned into lizards, that turned into monkeys, that turned into us, why do we still have fish? Why do we still have lizards? Why do we still have monkeys? <laughs> Why'd they all get left behind? But. This clip from Kent Hovind destroying Professor Dave on the idea that, again, we evolved from monkeys is pretty awesome and it should help clear things up. Check it out. <laughs> All these animals going back to a common ancestor. Do you believe you have a common ancestor with a strawberry, Dave? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're welcome to believe that. That's not science. That's a religion. Yes, it is science. Nope. It has to be science. Dave, nobody's ever seen a strawberry produce a non-strawberry. in the book show the amoeba turning into all the creatures including the no dog. they don't show me a book that shows that okay, okay, no okay, book shows that show me uh, there it is anything <laughs> coming from an amoeba <laughs> there is so much more than just the pseudoscience of evolution that needs to be exposed and i'm exposing it all on my podcast wait 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 60 seconds of your time seriously that's all i'm gonna need here you know how they told us in school, Pythagoras, Copernicus, all these guys figured out that the Earth was a ball through sticks and shadows and other things, and <laughs> that everyone thought that the Earth was a ball? April 21st, 1900 says the Earth is round. It is painful to read that Sir John Gorse, the head of the British Educational Department, is in serious trouble and has been threatened by Mr. Ebenezer Breach and other taxpayers of the city of Portsmouth in the Kingdom of England with prosecution under the Imposters Act. It seems that the schools of Portsmouth have been teaching the damnable and heretical doctrine that the Earth is a sphere. What? These guys were flat earthers? Ebenezer and his friends know, of course, that the Earth is as flat as a pancake. If you really sit down and think about it, think about the quadrillions of gallons of water in the ocean. Water doesn't act like that. Uh-oh. If you want more truth, check my bio. I want to make something really obvious by the end of this video. On the flat earth model, which is 100% correct if you ask me, the zodiac works with it being fixed in the firmament, it's spinning around and us seeing it as the seasons come and go. And this is what they're saying is happening with the earth. You know, not literally, but I, I just can't, I don't understand how the zodiacs are working if we're on this, orbiting the sun on a tilt, going 500,000 miles an hour through a space vacuum at like four and a half billion miles a year, by the way, everyone, if you didn't know, wake up, four and a half billion miles a year we're going and none of these are getting bigger or smaller or changing at all. They're staying in the exact same spots, sizes, shape, all of it. What's this? This is the Dendera Zodiac from 1802 from the Egyptians. <laughs> yeah, they drew the whole sky and it hasn't changed at all. Over hundreds of years. <laughs> Here's another one from our ancestors drawing the sky. And again, 
stayed the exact same. How how is every how does everyone believe that? But anyway, 1802 they drew that, and Polaris hasn't changed at all. If you didn't know, the Georgia Guidestones would have continued to prove this every single day from a terrestrial location they put a rock up and drilled a hole in it and that hole stayed on polaris every single day every single night but we're supposed to be on a tilt processing orbiting the sun chasing it that 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 this the earth's flat the earth's flat we're not moving biblical cosmology for everyone out there that's reading the bible <laughs> biblical cosmology right here you like the quran <laughs> here you go buddy does this you know, uh, this is Egyptian cosmology just look up Egyptian cosmology go Google it you'll get this does this look like a ball this is the earth being flat and this is the firmament holding the stars within it kind of like the Bible says and like Quran Bhagavad Gita all the holy scriptures across the world say the earth's flat for some reason <laughs> it's weird I thought this was interesting <laughs> I found this recently JP Morgan Millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. I wonder if that's why our ancestors were so obsessed with the sky as to draw it and make sure that everybody knew what was going on. The Dendera Zodiac is an ancient astronomical map that contains all the information necessary to calculate the journey of the Earth through one sign of the Zodiac to another during the 25,920 years of the processional cycle. <laughs> As you may or may not be aware, Flat Earthers love to show the Guinness World Record for the farthest photo ever taken, 273.4 miles. That's a missing 9.4 miles between these two observer points. Just one more quick example, I've got more, but I'm just gonna do two because I've shown plenty before. 190 miles between these two points and we're still seeing basically the whole mountain. Just to put this in perspective, if the Earth is curving, at a radius of 3,963 miles and has a circumference of 24,901 miles, there has to be constant curve or this, this shape just doesn't make sense. That, so it has to be eight inches per mile squared or something of the nature, right? <laughs> Which leads me right into my next point. Have you heard this before? Eight inches per mile squared is not a valid way to measure Earth's curvature. If you understood math, you would immediately see that this squared on miles is totally out of place. That's because this is a parabolic approximation. This is for doing calculations with a parabola. Our friend Dave here goes on to explain that this approximation was made by Samuel Robotham, a flat earther. He's not wrong. This was made by Samuel Robotham. Great guy, by the way. Great guy. Dave and every other glober that said this is not wrong. But... <laughs> Allow me to show you this video of this guy taking the time out of his day to compare mathematically all of the curvature models and see how different they are, and you might be surprised. I've got the distances in miles, because the equation is in inches and miles. So I'll have the distances in miles here, and all of the drop distances I have written in feet. Don't get confused, even though it says inches here, inches are going to get uh, pretty big as we go out into the distance, so I chose to show it in feet. If you're one mile away, the eight inches per mile squared will give you eight inches, and that comes out to you know, two-thirds of a foot. Let's go nuts. Let's just go crazy. Let's take it out to a thousand miles. At a thousand miles, here's our estimate based on eight inches per mile squared, and here are our actual values depending on how we sliced it. Um, and uh, I think you'll find that's still pretty decent. So here is a Google spreadsheet, and I will make this publicly available to anybody who uh, wants to look at it. I'll put it down in the description. Just to show you again, just compare them side to side, screenshot if you'd like. And again, the ears, 0.3% difference between them. You're not seeing curvature to the earth because again, these oceans, quadrillions of gallons of water, are not convexing to the rotundity of a ball. The physics of water always lays level at the surface. The mainstream narrative of why the sun sets is because we are falling, we're on a ball, right? We are falling backwards, eastward. A thousand miles per hour at the equator, on average, every other place, 700 miles per hour in the Amer America, other places like that, you know what I'm saying? You get the point. We're falling backwards eastward. That's why the sun sets. It's then obfuscated by the curvature of the earth. They're claiming all these oceans are curving over a ball. <laughs> Quadrillions of gallons of water. 
That's not the point. That's not what I'm trying to get at today. This is what happens. So you can't see the sun anymore, apparently, because the sun goes down here and then it fall backwards until we can see it again, okay? You get what I'm getting at. Then, can somebody explain why the sun doesn't continue to set in this video and why it seems to just kind of disappear into the soup of the atmosphere because the atmosphere is actually opaque and the sun eventually gets to a point where it can't push through anymore. <laughs> Seriously, I've been seeing a lot of people getting hung up on the fact that the sun sets, dude. We can't see it anymore. That doesn't work on a flat earth model. We should be able to see it forever. No, again, study the word opaque in general. Just try to understand it. <laughs> Light doesn't travel forever. The sun simply moves away from the viewer into the vanishing point, creating the illusion that it is moving down, setting slash rising. Like these light posts, for example. As they get farther away, they're all the same size, they'll eventually converge with the horizon. If they kept going, you wouldn't be able to see all of them forever. This is just how perspective works on level surfaces. The sky ramps down, the ground ramps up to create a vanishing point. And you can zoom and expand this and see more. Thank heavens I've been accumulating all of these photos to prove that the Earth is a level surface over this time, <laughs> for example. But dude, <laughs> the sun is local and it's getting farther away, it would get smaller! <laughs> like, change size! <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> Great advice right here. Research Flat Earth. It's me or these guys. <laughs> it's me or these guys. No other choice. Yeah. You see that? That's duct tape. Subsonic. Supersonic. Masonic. You may ask why is this guy bringing that up? You don't remember this? Seriously, something's going on here, guys. Share this video. Get it out to people. I'm shadow banned right now. I don't even hit the For You page anymore, but check out my podcast. If you want to hear more of my thoughts, check out my link tree. This is insane. No way. If I were to ask you, is this the remnants of a nuclear bomb? <laughs> the mushroom cloud of a nuclear bomb? Or a pyrocumulus cloud? Nuclear bomb? Or pyrocumulus cloud? Last one. Nuclear bomb or pyrocumulus cloud. <laughs> As you can tell by my demeanor, probably, all of these were pyrocumulus clouds. None of them were nuclear bombs, just to show you how similar they look. I'm gonna show one more thing and then I'm done. You're gonna have to check out my podcast. I obviously can't talk about all of this openly here without being censored. In 1986, Galen Windsor, a nuclear physicist, exposed the nuclear fear scam by licking a pile of highly radioactive uranium off the palm of his hand and ignited a chunk of plutonium into a shower of flaming dust to show how safe these materials were. Plutonium and uranium are told that they'll kill you if you go around them. This guy was eating them. The guy also drank reactor cooling pool water for fun and liked to go swimming in the pool to relax. The atomic bombs that allegedly dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki were a total ho We'll just stop there as far as vocalizing, but... Seriously, <laughs> something's going on with the narrative here. I'm not saying that Hiroshima and Nagasaki didn't happen, anything like that, seriously. The Earth isn't spinning at a thousand miles per hour at the equator or anywhere else, and I think I have evidence today to prove it to you. This photo in and of itself is some pretty awesome proof. I've explained this before, but for all the people that didn't see that video, because I'm so shadow banned, um, if you go from the west coast to the east coast, flying with the spin of the earth supposedly, because the earth is supposedly spinning a thousand miles per hour eastward, the flight should be longer, right? going with the spin of the earth and then vice versa if you're going east to west you're going against the spin like going against it it should be shorter <laughs> the time only 40 minutes that and the fact that planes use a model called fem flat earth model <laughs> should tell you that the earth might be flat and stationary and if you want more proof that we are stationary and the atmosphere ether 
medium, whatever is encompassing us is the only thing that's moving. You just have to look at how wind works. So, warm air rises and it cools. So it creates movement. So that's basically how wind works. Again, the molecules from the heat of the sun rises the pressure of the air and then they equalize and move around switch around that creates wind essentially so you'd have to agree that the molecules of the air rising equalizing moving the wind creating the wind is part of the atmosphere right and one of the first questions i asked when i first found flat earth is the earth is spinning a thousand miles per hour eastward why don't we spin under the clouds and the heliosexuals fired back with that the gravity of the earth is holding all of the atmosphere and the clouds and all of the molecules in the atmosphere, clouds, medium, ether, whatever you want to call it, with the perfect spin of the earth. Gravity's pulling it perfectly with it. So you got to realize it. You really want to drive this one home. The earth is supposedly holding all of this atmosphere, this air, perfectly. While at the same time, satellites can geocentrically, geostationarily, and polarily orbit, supposedly. And <laughs> the gravity supposedly doesn't keep pulling it in. It just leaves it out there. It doesn't pull it any closer to the... We're not talking about that, though. All that I'm trying to get at here is that if the Earth's gravitational pull is holding all of the atmosphere, all of the molecules, everything in all of these, these layers of the atmosphere, what happened to these molecules? But why aren't these molecules being held with the thousand mile per hour spin of the Earth? You already know what I think. The Earth's flat and the atmosphere is moving, not us. Have you ever wondered why rainbows are the shape that they are? Like, when you really think about it, isn't it kind of odd that they take the same shape every single time? And when we ask mainstream science how rainbows are formed, they say that light hits water particles and reflect refracts in it and then out of it and then that's what we see. No, I'm not joking. They're saying that rain falls and then light travels into the rain and this is the formation that happens, but... Have you ever wondered why this is impossible to recreate inside your house? Because you need a prism. You can use a prism to refract light to create the seven colors of the rainbow, but it won't hold the same shape. In my opinion, it's pretty obvious that the shape of the rainbow is caused by the firmament. And the firmament is acting as the prism, <laughs> creating the beautiful seven colors of the rainbow that we see in the sky. Where have I seen that shape before? But for my Christians, the firmament, <laughs> it's in your Bible. Seriously, where do you think the firmament is if we're on a ball spinning through a space vacuum? There's no hard, fast barrier holding the waters from the waters on the heliocentric model. Seriously, guys. But it's not just the Christians. Every single spiritual text across this entire level plane that we live on screams that we're on a level plane. Not a spinning rock! Is it just me, or is anybody else wondering why everybody didn't freak out when there was a bunch of news articles and posts saying that fish were falling from the sky? Cloudy with a chance of flippers. <laughs> Weird weather phenomenon causes fish to fall from the sky in northeastern Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, fish just falling from the sky, and sometimes it was raining, and other times it's not raining. So, you know me. I deep dove into this, and it seems like this has been happening for hundreds of years. Rain of animals. A rain of animals is a rare meteorological phenomenon in which flightless animals fall from the sky? <laughs> what the? A rain of fish was recorded in Singapore in 1861 when during three days of numerous fish were found in puddles. Rain of flightless animals has been reported throughout history in the first century AD. Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder documented storms of frogs and fish 
In 1974, French soldiers saw toads fall from the sky during heavy rain in Lalene. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Rural inhabitants in Yoro, Honduras, claim fish rain happens there every summer. A phenomenon called not even gonna try. Seriously, fish, frogs, all sorts of shit's been falling from the sky and did you guys know that honeybees and other bees can't fly when there's not light? <laughs> That disproves gravity, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you guys remember this? Oh, when suddenly this happens. A flock of black birds swirl to the ground. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. Hundreds of the birds appear like a plume of black smoke. A moment later, many of them fly off, but lots are killed on impact. I'm starting to think <laughs> maybe this realm just spawns shit when it needs it. Like birds and frogs and fish and things like that, like... Honestly, I don't know what's going on here. I just wanted to bring it to your attention because the mainstream media is telling everybody this is why this happens. One hypothesis is that tornadic water spouts sometimes pick up creatures such as fish and frogs and carry them for up to several mi miles. However, this aspect of phenomenon has never been witnessed by scientists, so basically what they're saying is tornadoes are picking up the fish and frogs and things like that, and they're not just spawning out of nowhere. No, tornadoes are doing it, but nobody's ever seen a tornado. <laughs> Consider this and think about it for yourself. I don't know what's going on. Your guess is as good as mine, but... This is the guy. <laughs> this is the guy that's supposed to have explained to millions of people that... The Earth isn't a level plane, you dummies. It's a ball spinning around the sun, spinning on a tilt, orbiting, going 4.4 billion miles a year, but all of the stars stay in the same exact positions, not getting further away from each other, expanding or contracting, but the exact same spot. This is the guy, huh? If you haven't seen his face on YouTube or any other platforms, you obviously haven't researched Flat Earth, because this is the guy <laughs> that they prop up to steer everyone away. This guy right here. One thing that I'm really curious if people know is this guy's not a professor. He just professes to be a professor. He's not a real professor. Here, listen to him say it himself. We didn't know what the channel was going to become. I didn't know it was going to become the center point, the centerpiece of my life, and that I'd become successful in reading, <laughs> and that I'd go on to explain dozens of other topics, including topics I'd know nothing about, but I hire experts in the field to write me the scripts, and then consultants to look at the scripts and look at the finished animations and make sure it's all good, right? I'm not preferring to be an expert, honestly, in any academic field, not even chemistry understand it very well and then what our buddy dave is trying to say here without trying to say it is that he's hiring pseudoscientists to write pseudoscientifical scripts that he then expels to all of his audiences on his youtube as if it's his own thoughts <laughs> dave's youtube is literally full of straw man arguments while he completely tap dances around the fact that <laughs> there's absolutely no proof that the earth is a globular ball and if you didn't know, Professor Dave Worst Nightmare is wits it gets it, and his entire community has been begging him to get on and destroy wits it gets it, but he's not going to be taking that offer anytime soon on a fair platform, that is. He's accepted the offer on a heliosexual platform where he'll be allowed to talk over wits it and interject constantly, but he won't take it on a real platform. If you guys didn't know, Bryce Mitchell has come out on multiple social networks as a flat earther and called out Joe Rogan trying to get on his podcast to tell everyone the earth is in fact flat. I'm going to play the clip for you if you haven't seen it, but I want to start off by saying thanks, Bryce, for bringing awareness to the true shape of the earth and also calling out Joe Rogan. He's definitely not going to have you on his podcast. He didn't accept Eric Dubay's invite to his podcast to debate Neil deGrasse Tyson that Neil ran away from, but <laughs> you know how that goes, but roll the clip. Hey, I'm here to call out Joe Rogan for talking crap about me and talking crap about my mama. He's been doing it for too long. Me and my mama will tell you right now this earth is flat. 
It ain't moving around at no 600 something thousand miles an hour, spinning a thousand miles an hour and floating through the universe constantly okay this earth is flat it's fixed and the stars and stuff rotate around us should have just left bryce alone huh 377 thousand followers on instagram and he's going off in this post he's explaining how trigonometry proves that the earth is flat all i can say is hats off bryce for telling everybody the truth the earth is definitely a level plane i've been trying to tell everyone for the past year but for everybody that's like, wow, Bryce has lost his mind. He believes the Earth is flat. <laughs> Probably thinking of this model right here. We don't believe that the Earth is a level disk out in outer space. We don't believe in space in general, if you didn't know. All that me and Bryce are trying to say to you guys is something is definitely off here, okay? <laughs> Seriously, look at this. Everyone acts like the heliocentric model is so sound. So, so sure, it's not. Nobody can explain how the exosphere is sitting right next to a vacuum of space without them equalizing. You need a barrier. It's called the firmament, and there's not space out here. I theorized might be water. Maybe that's why the sky's blue, but I don't know. Mainstream science will have you believe that. The motion of the stars is actually caused from the Earth spinning a thousand miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The stars spinning in a circular motion and realigning in the exact same spot every 365 days perfectly happens from the spin of the Earth and <laughs> from an explosion, the Big Bang. But I'm here today to tell you that there's been experiments in our past that suggest the exact opposite, that it's actually the sky moving <laughs> and not us. I'd like you to meet George. George Biddle Airy, that is. George conducted what today is called Airy's Failure. George Biddle Airy, in 1871, failed to detect the motion of the Earth. The experiment showed that the stars move relative to a fixed Earth. Sounds a lot like the flat Earth model. By first filling the telescope with water to slow down the speed of light inside, then calculating the tilt necessary to get the starlight directly down the tube, Airy unintentionally demonstrated that the Earth was fixed horizontally since the starlight came in at the correct angle without needing to change the tilt of the telescope. So, essentially what happened here? Telescope isn't filled with water, the light just goes straight in, normal. And then you fill it with water, tilt it at 5 degrees at any star, and it will go to the bottom. It will go through the eyepiece. If you start moving it, like relative to, say, the Earth was moving, it won't go to the bottom of the eyepiece, which proves exactly that the stars are moving, not us. And if you weren't aware, the mickelson morley experiment also proved that the Earth was stationary. In July of 1887, <laughs> it's like everyone forgot about it, it's been suppressed or something. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, probably in my next video. The Earth is not a ball, and it's not spinning, <laughs> at all. When I ask for proof that the Earth is spinning, <laughs> orbiting, or chasing the sun, everybody seems to always quote the Foucault's Pendulum. <laughs> This thing right here, if you didn't know. We've had the Foucault pendulum since about 1851. I've been noticing, like, a lot of misled people. What, did you think that they hung this ball from the ceiling and then it started spinning perfectly to knock these over? <laughs> it's admitted by the people that created the pendulum that it was hard to recreate the same motion and they always seem to have to give it a push. These don't just move independent like the Earth is actually a ball spinning. <laughs> also, you're probably gonna find this kinda odd. The Colt's Pendulum again, around 1851, and we've got Albert Einstein saying, I have come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment. <laughs> In 1922. This may be the only time that I agree with Albert Einstein. There is no visual evidence that anybody can ever provide that we are actually spinning you can create different models all day you can create a concur concave earth model that works with the phenomena that's happening in the sky doesn't mean it's correct same with the ball earth just to get back to the basics if you just really sit down and maybe meditate on this one you'll realize really quick this isn't making a lot of sense like 
This is what people think is happening, but nobody can recreate the surface of water convexing to its container. <laughs> this is what reality is like. The stars and the planets and the sky are not what we've been told. And I want to explain something real quick and then show you guys a minute of footage that I took last night of the moon and the stars in the sky. This is out of focus. This is not. And this doesn't exist. For the last minute, I'm going to show you what stars actually look like. <laughs> If you actually wanted to know the shape of the Earth, all you'd have to do is read this book right here. But <laughs> for all you Globers that I'm sure you're not gonna, I'm gonna go over a couple pages in it. The first flight is to Australia for the Gold Cup. Um, from Argentina and Brazil, two teams from Argentina and Brazil flew to Australia for the Gold Cup in celebration of the 200th anniversary of Captain Arthur Phillip. Now, this should have just been a routine flight over the Pacific Ocean to, to go over to Australia, but I was told that the flight had gone from Rio to Los Angeles. <laughs> wow, Los Angeles. Uh, and, and it did because, it, remember the title of the book, Emergency Flight Path Landings. <laughs> so you want to know what that would look like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah thousands of miles but on a flat earth <laughs> flying right over it a second one in the book china airlines flight 008 a taiwanese woman lied about her pregnancy and how far along she was she was 36 weeks you're not allowed to fly after 32 she told them that she was 30 um they had to emergency land because she started giving birth literally mid-flight so just another routine flight right taiwan to los angeles and land in alaska and if you look at the timestamps here, just read this paragraph and um, you can't refute it. There's no way they could get to Alaska. So here's the flight. It's like, doesn't make any sense. Like thousands of miles up here to Alaska. It's like they were flying right over it. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I can just do this all day. Um, Auckland to Lima, Peru. <laughs> Again, landing in Los Angeles. Like, <laughs> seriously, guys, look, look at this. Look at this. Here's another one. Yeah. They land in Moscow all the way up here. Why didn't they land down here? It's because we're on a flat earth. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. They're all the way up to London. Wow, really? In flat earth. <laughs> flat earth model. Makes sense. From Argentina to India. Yeah, yeah. From Argentina to India. And they land in Amsterdam. <laughs> Completely skip Africa. <laughs> Yeah, and then you look at it on, on a flat earth, it, it just makes sense, as always. But if you're wondering, like, why would they, why would they do this to us? Why would they lie to us, saying that we're on a ball? <laughs> just need to compare these real quick. Just, just look over these real quick. Love these points. No evolution, evolution. No Big Bang, Big Bang. It just gets rid of all the bullshit when you're on our model. <laughs> oh, and created by God. We came from monkeys. Yeah, that's the whole point. They want you to feel insignificant, like you're a speck of dust in an infinite, expanding space. <laughs> Dearest flat. 